Hello everyone. This week you will read, study, and learn about the cardiovascular and lymphatic systems. The heart lies in the thoracic cavity between the lungs. Blood pumped through the heart vessels travels via blood vessels called arteries. There are three major types of vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. The walls of large arteries have three layers which provide strength and flexibility for the arteries. Those layers are the tunica externa, tunica media, and tunica intima. Can you determine by looking at these three distinctive names which layer is the outermost, in the middle, and the innermost portion of the artery? You can read about this on pages 189 and 190 in your textbook. The heart is contained within the pericardium and has three distinct tissue layers, the endocardium, myocardium, and epicardium. The heart contains four chambers, the left and right atria, and the left and right ventricles. The right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs where it becomes oxygenated. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to all body systems. The conduction system of the heart works in sequence through these structures. The sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node, bundle of His, and Purkinje fibers. Blood pressure is a phrase that we are all somewhat familiar with. It is a measure of the force exerted by blood against the arterial walls during two phases of a heartbeat. Systole is the term for the contraction phase, and diastole is the term for the relaxation phase. The systolic pressure is given first, followed by the diastolic pressure. What was your last blood pressure measure? Hypertension is the term for consistently elevated blood pressure, while hypotension is the term for decreased blood pressure. Fetal circulation differs from that of a newborn infant. It is quite interesting to realize that fetal respiration occurs through the maternal blood. The lymph system plays an important immune system role as it cleanses lymph. Some of the structures include lymph nodes or glands, the thymus, and the spleen. White blood cells in the lymph system cleanse bacteria and bacterial debris by gobbling them up in a process known as phagocytosis. Various disorders discussed in this chapter include arteriosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries, coronary artery disease, including myocardial infarction or heart attacks, endocarditis, which is inflammation of the inner lining of the heart and its valves, varicose veins, which are enlarged, twisted, superficial veins, and then oncology, aneurysm, embolus, murmur, stroke, Hodgkin's disease, and mononucleosis. Be sure to read about these terms in Chapter 4. You will already know many of the abbreviations presented in this chapter, but do go ahead and review these and make sure that you know all of them. It might uh, make you feel good to know, for instance, that you already know what BP stands for, at least I hope you do, and MI and CPR. So real quickly, what do you think those stand for? If you're maybe a little unclear, think in terms of this chapter, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, MI, myocardial infarction, BP, blood pressure. And since you've had some practice working with abbreviations for the past several weeks, I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think the three-letter abbreviation is for deep vein 
thrombosis. What do you think the two-letter abbreviation is for residual volume? Or the abbreviation for right ventricle? Look those up in your chapter. Enjoy this week and please do email me if you need clarification on anything.